You want to make Power Query even more powerful by integrating AI? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to take to make that happen. AI models are getting more and more powerful every day, and many of us are using ChatGPT on almost a daily basis. But have you also been using it with Power BI? Well, probably as a Power BI developer, you have asked it to write the DAX measure for you, or to fix it, or the M function, or maybe some visualization trick. But that's not what I want to do in this video. I want to integrate ChatGPT into Power Query, meaning that we can send a prompt, and get a result back. And that can be super helpful, for example, for sentiment analysis, for some survey results that you got, some reviews, or maybe you want to categorize invoices on the basis of a description. Well, these are just simple examples, but there's so much that you can do with it if we use the OpenAI API. So how to connect to it? Well, if you don't know, start with ChatGPT and ask it, how can you connect to the OpenAI API? Let's do this. Now, here we are on chatgpt.com and I'm going to ask exactly that question. How can I connect to the OpenAI API with Power Query from Power BI? And to encourage it a little bit more, maybe it helps, you are a Power Query M code expert. Like always, you get an answer that looks amazing, but then the question is, does it really work? Now, let's have a look what it suggests. First, we need to get an API key. Once we have that, then we can go to Power BI Desktop, open up the Query Editor, then Advanced Editor, and there we can copy over this code. Now, that looks promising, and then there's some more explanation, which I ignore for now. Let's just get get started. Okay, so let's get started by getting that API key. If you already have an account, then log in. If not, you still need to sign up. Okay, now let me log in. And that brings me to the API documentation, which is always helpful. However, we're going to skip over it. Let's see if we can be fast and get this done in a few minutes. All right, now let's go to settings, then here on the left-hand side, API keys, and then in the top right corner, create a new secret Key. Now here we need to decide if you are going to be the owner or a service account. Now if you do it for a business organization, probably a service account. Now this is a small demo project, so therefore I leave it on you. And then a name, so this is going to be my Power BI demo. And then we have to assign it to a project. Create the secret key. Now this key only shows once, so copy it and save it in a safe location where only you can see it and nobody else. And that is important because it's not completely free. Well, at the beginning it is, you get some free credits, but after that, all well, you have to start paying. And if somebody else has your API key, well, that goes from your credit. Okay, so over here, I still have almost $3 left. Let's hope that that is enough for our example. Now back to ChatGPT and let's see what the next step is. We have our API key. Now we can go to Power BI, open the query editor, then, create a blank query and go to the advanced editor. Good. And there we need to copy over this code that it gives me here. Now, sounds nice. Let's do exactly that. Here we have a new file, get data, blank query. Now the query is blank, so let's put the code in, which we can do from the advanced editor, which we find over there. And this is where we paste in our code. All right, now that actually doesn't look so bad, right? So we need an API key. Well. We can just copy it over. Then we have the URL, headers, request, body, response. All right, so that's just the API request. Perfect. And over here, you also see the prompt. What's the capital of friends? Okay, now sounds promising. I'm going to put in our API key. Now I have it copied, so I just paste it in between the quotation marks. And if you think you shouldn't be hard coding that API key into your code, well, probably you're right. And there are better, safer options, but that's not the focus of this video. I just want to get that connection to the API to work so that we can send a prompt. All right, good. Now, anything else that we need to change? Well, it doesn't detect any syntax errors, so let's give it a try. Let's click on done and turn it on. No, no good luck. We have over here an error. Now, if you get an error, well, there's a bad request. So just copy that error, then go back. And then here we can just say, fix this error I got. Now it says something that the endpoint has changed. Ah, they added over here chat in between for the newer models, although these are not super new. Okay. Good, and here we have the update, updated code. Okay, let's copy that one. Let's go back to Power BI, 
advanced data term. And then over here, I don't want to lose that API key. So I'm just going to remove this part. Perfect. Now the API URL is important that we have the updated one. All right, but here we have that API key, which I'm going to copy here. All right, and then we can remove that top part. And we still have an error. Um, now this error is over here. Now we can ask ChatGPT to fix that for us, or we can try ourselves. I think these need to be curly lines, curly brackets. Let's see if this works. Yep, that seems to be fine. And of course, I don't want to have the older model. I want to have ChatGPT4. Okay, so that I'm also going to change. And then here we have what is the capital of Francis de Bront. Okay, now let's see if this works. Capital of Francis Paris. But I've all, ChatGPT is working. All right, so we have our API connection. Let me interrupt just for a bit. If you want to become a better Power BI developer, then check out my trainings over here. I have a training on Power BI design, as well as how to pass the PL300 exam and become Power BI certified. Let's go back to the video. Now let's go back again once more to the advanced editor. Now this is where it's interesting. Now here, what model are we using? GPT-4, uh, maybe if there's a newer, more powerful model that you want to use, you can put that one in there. However, then probably it also uses more credits, okay? So keep that in mind. Then the next thing is the prompt itself. What's the capital of France? And why do we have two? Well, here we have role system, role user. Role system, that's the first one, that basically sets the tone of the conversation that you have with ChatGPT. If you say, ah, oh, you're a, a translator, then it will only do translations. You're an IT expert, then it will pretend to be an IT expert only doing IT stuff, right? So. I probably would leave it a little bit more generic. Right? Otherwise, it might just tell you bad request because, well, it doesn't fit into what you put over here as the system. Uh, yeah, content role. Okay. Now, then we have the user. That is the actual prompt. Okay, so what is the capital of France? So instead of that, we could, for example, ask, what is the best self-service BI tool? Okay, let's see what it says. And then here for max tokens, this is how long the output can be. 50 is fine. Let's put it maybe to 100. Uh, let's click on done. Determining the best self-service BI tool can depend largely on the business specific needs, blah, blah, blah. Ah, Power BI above Tableau and Click. Ah, that must make the Power BI developers happy. All right, so good. This is working. But now this is not very helpful because I can do the same thing by going to ChatGPT and ask it there. Why would I want to do this? here in Power Query in Power BI. Well, the thing is, we can turn this into a function. And that function, we can then invoke to create a new column, row by row, where the inputs can be different for every row. Now, let me show you on a sample data set and how to change this to a function. Now, for that, we again need to go to the advanced editor. And to turn this into a function, we just have to say what are the parameters. Now, we're going to have a prompt um question okay so that's the first part which we want to have as uh, text and then the second input parameter is going to be the prompt and then input let's call it as text okay and uh, what is it going to return well everything that follows after so these two parameters we can then use for the prompt which we have over here okay now this shouldn't go in between these quotation marks so just prompt question, maybe a space in between, but I don't think it's really necessary. Okay, and then we have the prompt input. Now that should have worked, but probably I made a typo. Let's quickly go back, and that's why you should use the IntelliSense or just to copy it over, just like this. Nice. Okay, what do you think of? And then prompt input, Power BI. Boom. There you go works. Now, it works for those inputs, but now we need a table. A table where we can use a function to do exactly this, but then for every single row. Now, for that, we need a data set, but let's first remove this here, and let's also rename the function, because query1 is not a nice name for a function. I'm going to call this one chat GBT. Okay, but then we go to Kaggle, of course. Now, there we have thousands of data sets, and let's look for a nice one on which we can actually test it. 
Uh, let's go for a lighter data set. Ah, yeah, One Direction, all songs with lyrics. Okay, we can analyze the lyrics and then categorize them, for example. Now, who is not a fan of uh, One Direction? So let's pick this one. All right, navigate to it. And let's double check over here. Yeah, lyrics are there, perfect. So uh, let's download it. You might have to sign in. After you downloaded it, we can connect to it. All right, so it is a CSV. There it is. This is all good. It can stay as it is. And now if we scroll to the right, yes, there we have our lyrics. Now, the lyrics do have some special characters, right? It has these line breaks. Uh, sometimes, depending on how you write that chat GPT uh, function, you might want to clean it up meaning get rid of the special characters, the line breaks, which you can do by taking that column and then go here to transform and then format and then clean. Now uh, you see, not so pretty. However, then we are at least sure that our prompt will work. Although I think in our version, it's not really necessary, but let's, let's leave it like this. Okay, now the next thing is to actually invoke the function that we wrote, or ChatGPT wrote. Now, add column, invoke custom function, new column name. Now, it's going to categorize, so song category. And then the function is going to be ChatGPT. Then we will have first the question, and then the input. So the input is going to be the lyrics. So let's start with that one. And what do we want to do with these lyrics? What is actually the prompt? We want to categorize them. And here we want to assign uh, category to this song lyric and that's it so new column name song category we have a prompt we have the input okay now this might take a while also depending on how big your data set is probably would have been a good idea to first filter it on five rows test it and then on the whole data set but now it's too late now we have to wait and see and that took ages but it's done not exactly what I was hoping for, because it says the category for this song there could be pop music. Okay, I just wanted to say something like, oh, it's a romance song or it's a party song. So we have to adjust the prompt. And that's why you should test it first. So let's adjust it to assign a one word category to this song. Or maybe instead of to this song, based on these song lyrics. Again, it took a little bit of waiting time, but now it is working. We have here the song categorization with categories like romance, youthfulness, freedom, etc. Okay, now let's load this data to a table. Now here in our table view, you see we have a table with all the way at the end, the song category. Now it's just because the lyrics are so wide. Let's just make it a little bit smaller, just like this. Perfect. Okay, now of course we want to analyze the data, so let's go to the report view and build a bar chart. Now as you can see in this bar chart, at the top we have romance, heartbreak, love, that's what most songs of One Direction are about. Who would have ever thought? <laughs> now, of course, then there are some remaining categories like party, determination, empowerment, but that's just a small part. All right, now of course, this technique of using ChatGPT with Power Query to call that API and send a prompt to ChatGPT to then get a result back as many business applications, right? You could, for example, also analyze the descriptions on invoices uh, or some sentiment analysis. Now, let me know what you can think of in the comment section below and if you like this technique and if this is something you would try. Now, thank you for watching. And if you want to build reports together with me, then also check out my upcoming design transformation program. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.